What is up YouTube? That's it here, bringing you guys an extra special video. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can win games exclusively in the team preview aspect in VDC 2019. Now, for those of you who don't know, the team preview is the part of the game where, you know, you have 130, sorry, not 130 seconds, you have a minute and 30 seconds. You can see your opponent's team, they can see your team, and you both get to choose which four Pokemon and which order you're going to bring them to the battle. And a lot of people just kind of throw their Pokemon on the team, but I'm here to tell you that you can win a bunch of games by how you you organize your team and the whole vibe that your team gives off and how it can influence your opponent's play. So to start things off, I'm going to be showing you guys a team that I think is perfectly optimized that I'm currently hovering at about 1800 on the ladder with right now. So this is the team. You guys are going to see it in battles uh, over the upcoming weeks. It's very, very good. It's Incineroar Smeargle, Tapu Fini, Groudon, Kartana, Xerneas. There's a QR4. This is my Patreon team for the month of October. And uh, very cool team. Uh, I like it a lot. And the one thing that this team screams out because it's perfectly optimized is that like holy moly there's Incineroar and Smeargle right at the back because remember guys when you're taking the notes on team preview you're at your notebook out you're playing against the highest level people in the world playing at these regionals you usually take notes so the first thing you do is you write down the first six Pokemon so if the first two things you're going to be writing down here are going to be Incineroar and Smeargle what's the one thing you think that Smeargle and Incineroar have in common they both have fake outs Smeargle has a relatively faster fake out than Incineroar because they're fully EV trained in speed so the first thing you're going to look at when you look at my team is bam Huge, huge fake outs. So that means if you're a player who's using like Lele's or, uh, you know, Serena's to block priority moves, you're going to think that those are good Pokemon to bring to the specific matchup because they don't get fake outed. Or maybe you might bring them in the back and think you can switch them in. But in reality, if you look at the rest of my team, I totally destroy anyone that's trying to run Lele because I have Fina to take away the terrain if I want to. I have Kartana to destroy Lele. Xerneas beats Lele. Incineroar works against Lele in most situations. Groudon is just a monster. And Smeargle, like, if they leave Lele, well, actually, my Smeargle doesn't even have Fake Out. So, remember, guys, uh, I'm trying to put on this air of I have a really big turn one Fake Out pressure. And in reality, sure, my Incineroar has Fake Out, but my Smeargle is afforded the luxury of cutting Fake Out based on how I have organized my team in the team preview. Now, my Smeargle moveset, for those who don't know, uh, I run Spiky Shield over Fake Out. So, I have Spiky Shield, Wide Guard, Lovely Kiss, and Follow Me. And so, when I lead, like, Smeargle Xerneas, there's a lot of times that because my team preview was organized like this, they think that I'm going to go for that really big, uh, you know, Fake Out play, like Fake Out uh, Geomancy. In reality, I just can't. And uh, I'm completely afforded the luxury of them believing that I can based off my team preview. Also, this team preview right here hides the fact that my Garton is really in the team. They see like the Incineroar, they see the Smeargle, they see the Feeny Groudon, and they've really got like the idea of how I want to play. So like, alright, he has, you know, big turn one fake outs. Uh, it looks like Feeny Groudon, he probably has like gravity swagger memes. And then, like, the Kartana is a little bit of an enigma in here. The Kartana, they've already got an idea of how the team is going to play out, like, in their head. They have, like, all right, cool. I can beat Incineroar. I can beat Smeargle if I play around it like this. I can beat Feeny with XYZ Pokemon. Uh, you know, my Restricted Mon can beat that Groudon in this situation. But then the Kartana comes in here, and Kartana is a Pokemon that can hold three common items. It can hold a Sash. It can hold a Vest. It can hold a Scarf. And the Sash set in particular, the most common set, is relatively well known for using Tailwind, so at this late point in the team preview, remember the right things things down one at a time, you've really just thrown in a completely different Pokemon that has a whole level of speed control to this uh, team preview aspect. Remember, like, Feenies are relatively known for having Icy Wind, Kartana now has Tailwind, you really gotta watch what you're doing here, and the last but not least, Xerneas. Xerneas, uh, you know, just fills in that last spot perfectly well. So I feel with the team preview, what you wanna do is draw your atten opponent's attention in so many different spots to where every single Pokemon they write down, they have to, like, rethink their strategy in how they're gonna actually defeat your team. Because remember, you only have a minute and 30 seconds, and the more you can keep them guessing, or the more you can put on an air of what your team is supposed to be doing, in that minute and 30 seconds, the more value you're going to be able to get. And I do also recommend you guys take the full one minute and 30 seconds to lock in your teams. A lot of people don't do that. I, I am guilty of this too. I'm guilty as well. You see me lock in before my time uh, all the time. But, you know, definitely uh, take the full timer and, you know, stay for the whole 130. We're going to look at a few other variants of this exact same team. I'm going to show you guys different organizations of the team because right right now I said this was the fully optimized organization it says exactly what I want to say and it gets me uh, through having this optimization the ability to cut fake out of my smeargle so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at an optimization that is a little bit different now the name of this team is the red white and blue team you see we have two red pokemon two white pokemon and two blue pokemon red white and blue 
America, that's what I'm talking about here. But what this team preview, other than just uh, being perfect to its namesake, a lot of people would probably kind of go with this. Like, there's nothing really wrong with this. This is a perfect example of just kind of throwing your team in the team preview. What this team shows off, they have Groudon, Incineroar, Carton, you're like, BAM! This, this, this lead is saying, man, you really need to intimidate these three Pokemon. These three Pokemon are things that you would like to bring your Incineroar against. Now remember, if they're bringing their Incineroar, if they're going to lead their Incineroar, what do you have as the last Pokemon on your team? One of the best checks to Incineroar in the format in Tapu Fini. And that Tapu Fini is going to come in, like, undetected and be able to just seal up that Incineroar slot. Because you know they're going to lead with it because you have three huge physical attackers right at the beginning. And remember, guys, Team Preview isn't just, like, you know, the, the first three Pokemon on your Team Preview are going to completely influence. It's all about when they first see the Team Preview, what pops. You're drawing their eyes, you're misdirecting them into things you want them to see to influence their play so you can punish it with your own because with this type of lead uh i'm relatively able to get off a geomancy if they're gonna be leading incineroars because if i were to let's say if i were to lead this if i were to have this as my team preview what i'm saying is like hey you can lead pretty much whatever mon you want and incineroar and your incineroar should be able to have a huge impact here incineroar is pretty good against xerneas uh and incineroar gets a huge intimidate up on all those mons so in this situation i'm relatively safe to lead feeny or Xerneas Smeargle and go for just a follow me Geomancy. This gets around, or like a, maybe a double protect and then like a, a follow me Geomancy to get around the fake outs. But, uh, you know, he probably wouldn't even be fake outing because Smeargle's known for having fake out. And again, I'm afforded the luxury of not having fake out based on how close Smeargle is to Incineroar in the team preview because it draws their eyes right to that little corner. So, uh, again, this is misdirecting our opponent to uh, help us lead with other Pokemon to bait them into leading what we want. So we're going to look at one more a variant of the same team that has a completely different uh, aesthetic, I guess. So if we with this, this is what a lot of people uh, would kind of expect this team to look like. If you are building this team, this is the order that uh, most people kind of just throw it in their team preview. Obviously, a lot of people like this type of team preview where you separate your uh, pro your legendaries or your, your best Pokemon uh, on opposite sides and make them look at the whole team as a whole. Like, really, I like start with one uh, restricted mon and then end it with one restricted mon, so they have to pretty much take the whole team in at face value. And what this team does is it pretty much just screams, hey, I'm going to be using, uh, you know, Smeargle Xerneas as my lead. And if you know anything about this team, which you guys will in the upcoming weeks, uh, I don't really use the Xerneas that much. And I rarely lead with it. I rarely, rarely lead with it. So, again, I totally can lead Smeargle Xerneas all the time, but, uh, you know, I'd much rather lead, like, Feeny and Groudon because that is just an amazing lead right now and it's almost free because like they're gonna be going so ham like if I were to like if I were to see this lead and I had like a Crobat or a Coco or anything with Taunt, Knockoff, Magic Room, any way to stop Xerneas and this is my this is my team preview if I'm the opponent and I have any way to stop the Xerneas you know I have to lead it out of just sheer respect for the potential of Xerneas popping off so remember that's three different team previews for the same team that all say that my team does a completely different things to influence my opponent uh, to, you know, fall prey to what I'm actually doing, you know? Three three completely different things that it's, my team looks like it says it's doing that it's really not. Because in reality, it's it's mostly just the top of Feeny team. And, you know, none of those team previews really... I, I'm pretty sure Feeny slid in under the radar in all three of those uh, team previews. And Top Fini does have a huge impact in this team. So the next team we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at another team. You guys have actually seen me use this team before. This is going to be my Rusher Ramp team. Uh, I want to show you guys a bunch of other teams when doing this little segment in this video. Because, you know, sure, I could just talk about one team and how cool one team is. But, you know, I really want you to understand and wrap your head around the concept. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at the Rusher Ramp team. So you guys remember this team. This is the uh, default way that I had the Rusher Ramp team organized. And what I want to talk about in Team Preview is, especially in this format, you see a lot of teams that use two restrictive mons, two like major support mons, and remember, because you only since you only need to bring four Pokemon to each game, and since most people play on battle spot, the strategy doesn't really work that much at regionals, but since you're mostly playing on battle spots, you technically have two completely extra spots just to mess with your opponent or to add like very specific matchup tweaks. So in this board, obviously I have Reshiram Groudon, that's what I love bringing Reshiram, it's my favorite uh, restrictive mon, and I have uh, Sceptile with Psychic Seeds, Unburden, and uh, Scarf Lele, and then the Ditto and the Shedinja are just two mons that I bring very rarely that completely mess up your opponent's team preview, because a lot of the things that hit Reshiram, a lot of the things that hit Groudon, a lot of the things that hit Lele, all those things just don't hit the Shedinja. Like, at the very end, you're like, well, if you want to beat me, 
You gotta beat Shedinja. So it really makes it so like they're gonna, they're not gonna be able to bring like Xerneas, for example. Xerneas is pretty good against this. Xerneas does not work against Red Card Ditto or uh, Shedinja, like at all. There's no way that Xerneas even has an impact. Of course, they're still gonna bring their Xerneas, but uh, you know, they might not leave with it. They might be extremely wary of it. And this is just a good example of, of course, I'm gonna bring Reshiram Groudon and most likely uh, Sceptile Lele every single game, but my opponents are forced to respect those last two Pokemon, otherwise they just risk losing the game. Because they're forced to respect it, because these Pokemon have so many niche options that can potentially check them, uh, like, you know, there's not really that many things that can get the Shedinja. Obviously, if, like, I have a Shedinja, you're probably gonna bring your Incineroar, you should be bringing your Incineroar anyways, but now that I know that you have to do it, that's the difference. It's a difference between they should do it and I know that they have to if they do not want to lose. I can influence my play and I can change the way I want to play the game to punish people because I know the way they're going to be playing. So that's another, that's just another part of the team preview is, you know, putting stuff in your team specifically to mess with your opponent's team preview and influence how they're going to play. So the next team we're going to be looking at is actually going to be the team that uh, I'm going to be using for the November Patreon. I'm working on it right now. Uh, th the items are on it, but it's the base Pokemon right here. It's actually not using Xerneas. It's not using Sinner. It's going to be a little bit different, but it says a lot of really different things. It has a lot of mixed signals, and opponents aren't going to be able to actually like respect all of these options at once because look at the team we see Ho-Oh, Sogaleo, Cradilly, Hippodon, Excadrill, and Lele so right off the bat I have three or four modes that I can really go I can go Hippodon, Excadrill and I can just go to town like Excadrill is really underutilized this format it's faster than all the mons that have like Swift Swim, Corafil when it's in its Sandstream, Hippodon is one of the slowest weather stars in the format. This is actually going to be a really cool team as the uh, meta evolves, I think. Because remember, like Hippodon's really good against Solgaleo, which is also really good right now. It's really good against a lot of things. Good against Incineroar, good against a lot of stuff you'd be very surprised. Solgaleo is one of the best restricted bonds right now. Uh, it's full metal body makes so it can't become intimidated. So Solgaleo can come to any matchup regardless whatsoever. And pairing it with the Ho-Oh up there pretty much just says like, hey, these, these are my restricted. This is what I'm gonna do. Uh, come at me, bro. This 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 lead up there pretty much just says like, hey, Incineroar is pretty good here. You should probably lead it. But in reality, the lead you're gonna be going with most times is gonna be a Choice Scarf Tapu Lele and the Ho. -Oh. This is another example of the separating your actual win conditions on the opposite side and far away from each other as possible to uh, you know mass their synergy. It's actually gonna be a Choice Scarf Magic Room Tapu Lele. Remember, Magic Room is the move that makes it so items can't be used for five turns. So no Xerneas. Uh, you know, Geomancies, no Focus Sashes, no Life Orbs, no nothing like that. And remember, since I'm using Choice Scarf Magic Room, it's going to make it so I can use... I'm not locked into a move anymore, so my moves that's like Magic Room, Psy Shock, Moon Blast, and, you know, whatever I want to put as that last move, I might put, like, Dazzling Gleam, Focus Blast, uh, you know, Psychic, what have you, Shadow Ball, for example. But yeah, so it makes it so my Lele is still really, really good, still incredibly usable. And the Ho-Oh, for example, remember, I can't use any items, so I'm going to be pairing it with Psychic Seeds. Psychic Seeds, Ho-Oh. So turn one, I can go, like, Magic Room, Tailwind, and then Ho-Oh is also packing, like, Light Screen, Sacred Fire, so a little bit of a bulky wall setter. And, you know, remember what I said at the start. Remember what I said they thought I was going to do, like, Hippodon. Uh, extra drill, Solgaleo, and a bunch of other stuff like that. And also, Cradilly is another Pokemon. Look, I have three Pokemon that are organized like one, two, three. They're as spread out as they could possibly be. My three weaknesses to water Pokemon, right in the middle of them, I have Cradilly. So, if you're looking at my team, like, bam, you see, wow, he's really weak to water. There's a Cradilly right in the middle. And also, note, Cradilly has huge synergy with Hippodon, because remember, Hippodon Sandstorm is going to multiply the defense of all rock type Pokemon, which Cradilly is, by 1.5. So, Cradilly actually commands like a really big spot in this team preview and i feel this team preview really lets lele like slide under the radar because remember lele also has synergy with extra lele also has synergy with sogaleo and so there's a ton of options that can really come into play with this type of team i am really excited to use it for all throughout november i just have to finish up the ev spread optimizations the move optimizations and you guys will probably start seeing videos near the start of november for it but again this is another example of a team preview that says three or four things that you have a ton of options and these options that you have uh, punish what your team looks like it says that it does. So it's really, really cool. So that's all that I have showing uh, my teams. Like these are all things, these are all teams that I've shown, you know, that, uh, again, I'm gonna go back and, and sit on the uh, the perfect form here. Oh, man, this team is just so good. I love this team so much, but it says it's just, it's perfectly optimized. I'm, I'm doing so well that I'm so proud of it. But uh, what we're gonna be looking at right now is three teams of opponents that I feel are 
very well optimized and we're gonna talk about what they look like they said they did uh, I'm going to talk about like situations where what these teams look like they said that they, they did and then what they actually did and how, you know, their team preview played a really big part in that. So the first one we're going to look at, we can see this guy. This guy was like uh, an 1800 guy on ladder. We see Groudon Cherim, Goisiopod, Smeargle Mewtwo, and Bulu. Very weird team, right? You don't really see this that often. Again, he's like 1800. He's totally allowed to do this. And you can see my team. I'm using QR team. That team's garbage. That doesn't matter. Um... But yeah, so it looks like he's going to go Groudon Cherim, right? That's what you guys would... If you guys were looking at the team, you're like, Alright, cool. Groudon Cherim. I have to respect that. Especially if you're looking at it on my board. Look at the team I'm playing with. Like, he should have went Groudon Cherim, right? In every situation, like, Groudon Cherim is just the play for days, right? Like, that's that's so good against Scarf Ogre. Uh, Scarf Ogre, Furret, Kartana garbage, you know? Um, also note that, like, the Bulu could potentially be Scarfed. There's so many other things he can do. What he actually did against me was he led Mewtwo Smeargle and uh, went fake out Smeargle, uh, Trick Room Mewtwo, hard switch out the Mewtwo for the Groudon, like a slow Groudon, and then just started sporing all my Pokemon. So, <laughs> you know, that's another example of a team view that looks like it says one thing and does literally, quite literally, the complete, complete opposite of whatever you would have expected it to do. And, and you know, looking at it, Again, like you can see, really bulky Groudon, Gleesipod, pretty slow Pokemon, usable in Trick Room, Bulu, I didn't see the Bulu, but it has to have been like a Bandit or like the bulkiest Bulu of all time, and just ready to slam at a bunch of moves, so really unique way to play something that I did not see coming based off his team preview, and you know, he definitely, I, I'm pretty sure he won that game, but I mean like, you know, of course he would win the game, because his team preview is so well optimized, if you would have done it completely in a different order, if you would have had like, you know, Smeagol Mewtwo at the very top, I would have been a lot more keen on it, or, you know, like, uh, just anything but the Groudon Cherim, I think, I would have been a lot more keen on the fact that that was a possibility. And even when he led the Mewtwo Smeargle, I wasn't even ready for it. That's, like, how well he disguised that play that he was gonna do. So, the next team we're gonna be looking at here is gonna be a player that was upper 1700s, and this is an example of a team that I think it's, it's the core of a team that recently top cuts some midseason season It's a high-level Japanese team going on right now. The strat of this team is use Fling Raichu, not with a King's Rock. You're flinging a 50% berry at your Lunala, and the way you play it is you're proccing your Lunala's weakness policy with the Fling. It's doing like, you know, 3%, and then it fully restores you and gives you a weakness policy proc. Tornadus is another really good Sash Pokemon right now. Lele, Kyogre, both common Sash users, sorry, Scarf users, and Toxicroak's always just a really standard Mon, especially in Kyogre teams. So, again, I'm really playing around beating that, like, Fling 50% berry and, uh, you know, Lunala playstyle and stuff like that. And, uh, what he actually did was just not that. He, uh, ended up going with, like, Raichu Tornadus, and I just super punished him for it, and eventually, like, pretty much what I'm trying to say is his team looks like it does the Raichu Lunala thing, but, uh, it, it didn't. And I eventually found it out by, like, knocking off some of the items on a bunch of other Pokemon. But remember, he was making me respect that potential lead that is so meta right now. He made it look like he was doing the meta thing. In reality, he just wanted to set up a Tailwind and bring out his Specs Ogre. It was actually a Specs Ogre. So, like, you know, he wanted to set up a Tailwind safely, bring in a Specs Kyogre, and just win the game. And so, you know, that's another thing. Playing on what people think is really good right now, and then doing something uh, that looks similar to it, but not quite it, is another way to actually win games. And so the last team I have to show for you guys, this guy I fought last night on Battle Spot. He is using the number, he's the number one ranked player in the world, and it's with this team. I want to show it off, and the video will be coming to YouTube later. But look at this guy's team. This is the number one ranked guy in the world. He's still number one ranked, and I, I actually beat him, but look at his team. Look at this team. Can you guys tell me what this team does in the team preview? That's another thing. Out of all these teams that I've shown, have you guys actually been able to analyze the items? I didn't really talk about this, but the most important thing about the team preview part of the game is being able to point at each one of your opponent's Pokemon, every single one of them. It's something I focus on in my coaching on Patreon so heavily is being able to tell me every single item 
that every one of their Pokemon is holding. You almost have to do it in every single team preview you go into. You have to tell me one to two items every single Pokemon is holding. Otherwise, you realistically can't play that game because you're gonna be too caught off guard. I have a huge, I have a huge like flowchart list for finding out each item, but uh, you know that's a different story for another time. But this guy's team preview, he has Dialga Kyogre and then four solid checks to Xerneas, uh, assuming it's Roar and Cineroar. But you know. Steela, check Xerneas, Ferrothorn, check Xerneas, Crobat, Haze, Poison type, check Xerneas, Incineroar, Roar, Fake Outs, check Xerneas, uh, and also Dialga, if, if I were to look at this game, because remember, most people are, are using Xerneas, looking at this game, Xerneas, if I get my boosts off, beats Dialga, I can one-shot that thing with the Moonblast, Xerneas, if I get my boosts off, can one-shot Kyogre, so it's pretty much baiting me into going Xerneas, like, if you, just, if you were to look at the first two mons without taking any context into it, Smeargle Xerneas looks like it absolutely bodies this guy, absolutely destroys him, because I have a higher fake out speed tearing than any of his Pokemon with Smeargle, if I did have fake out of my Smeargle, which I don't, and, uh, you know, like, he has no real way to get around it, uh, other than, like, you know, Crobat-ish, but then again, I probably would just lovely kiss it and not do other things. Also, side note, he was using a Lumberry Crobat, but uh, again, this guy's team preview, he was ranked 1939. He's using Choice Spec Celesteela, Lumberry, uh, Full Attack, Brave Bird Crobats, like really unique stuff. And if you guys look at the game on my Twitch, Twitch channel and when I actually bring it onto the thing, when I get into the team preview, I get into like serious mode and I start calling these things. Like we see the steel and I was like, huh, I wonder if that's going to be specs. That'd be really uh, situational if this is specs here. And it, uh, we knock it off and it actually was specs. We start seeing Crobat and I'm like, huh, I, I don't mind eating a Super Fang, but I don't want to eat a Brave Bird. Let's do this play to play around that. Or, you know, let's do uh, this play to play around attack on Smeargle. Like we actually have to start playing completely differently based off what I expect him to be. But that's because I, I, I know a little bit more about how I would run those Pokemon, and so it's really cool to see how I would run those Pokemon the same way he would run them, but remember, the, this is about team preview, and how his team baits you into bringing Xerneas, and that just absolutely dominates any person that wants to bring Xerneas. Like, in my game, I won because I did not bring Xerneas. I brought, um, I brought Groudon, Incineroar, uh, Kartana, and I actually think I brought, I brought Smeargle, yeah. I don't remember the exact order, but I won because I had Kartana, and I think Kartana ended up getting like three KOs that game. But you know, really unique way for this guy to look at the game. Like he's not using Xerneas, and he's totally like bodying people, like totally styling on people. So again, hopefully you guys like this type of video. I'm sure I could have went a lot more in depth. And normally when I'm doing like coaching on my Patreon, on Twitch and stuff like that, I do go a lot more in depth, but I wanted to make a quick little video because I got a lot of requests to make a video talking about the different ways that you can use team preview to advantage to influence your opponents. Obviously, you can make meme teams that excel at winning team previews. Like any teams with Zoroarks, most teams are shit ninjas. Uh, you can make teams specifically to mess with people in team preview. Like uh, in 2016, I had a team that was Gengar Sableye, which is a very good team, Mega Gengar and Sableye. I had it with Zorark, I had Cresselia, and then my restrictors were Giratina and Lugia. And I was playing a guy in a... Uh, premier challenger like mid-season one time it was like a second round and i led with what looked like lugia it was technically zorark and uh giratina and my judge my, my opponent called judge and he's like judge that uh lugia's multi-scale it didn't activate pressure and the judge comes over you know looks at my game and stuff like that and says uh no, everything's fine. The guy's like, no, multi-scale Lugia's banned. And multi-scale Lugia was banned. I was using pressure. But remember, my Zorark was disguised as Lugia. And, you know, that's one, that's a bunch of different, like, things on the team preview. Like, we, you force your opponents. Like, I'm really good on him for, well, I mean, he didn't really realize it was Zorark because he was, he was a bit of an idiot. But, you know, he, he was actually looking to make sure, he wasn't looking for Zoroarks. He was looking to make sure I had my abilities correct. But, uh, you know, that's different. Like, you know, using Zorark in any team preview whatsoever is totally gonna get you so many free games. I think I could do a whole nother video talking about just Zorark team preview shenanigans because that's a that's a whole nother thing for a whole nother day. But guys, thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions or what you thought about this video in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like. Those really help me out, believe it or not. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any team previews of your own, leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to tweak those to help you get the maximum potential out of your teams. Hope you guys do that, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.